Well now just stun shots, yeah. Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Big Porky here. Yeah? The voice of hardcore boxing. <laughs> you are, sorry. Right, uh, I'm joined by Richard Towers. Uh, we're going to have a chat today about what boxing does for the community. Now, people might say, oh, we've heard all that before, it's a tired old thing and that. Well, statistics prove that boxing, not only does it save life by giving you fitness, it also saves people's lives by taking them off the streets and giving them something to do. For example, I were a troubled kid. Uh, I spent a lot of my time, not on street corners, but mainly in my bedroom at home, brooding. And then when I'd get out, I'd do something crazy, like steal a car or, or things. I'd just do mad stuff, because I never had no, no, nothing to put my energies into. And I ended up in Borstal, well, it was a detention centre then. And then you go through it all, so trust me, Boxing saved my life at a later date in, in when I got into boxing forums and showing an interest in, in, for, in, in my 40s, I'm 49 now. Now Richard Towers here, he's ex-champion boxer, he's, he's been in boxing since his 20s. Richard, boxing's basically saved your life, hasn't it? We know that, don't yeah, we? Yeah, a few people have said that to me, yeah. and, uh, what, what I like to um, reiterate or emphasise mm -hmm. is that I don't necessarily see it as boxing saved my life, I see mm. it as Brendan saved my Brendan, life. Brendan Ingle, yeah. Yeah, definitely. And, um, and as much as I don't want to take credit away from such a fantastic yeah. sport and yeah. such a yeah. fantastic opportunity, mm -hmm. but a lot of, you know, unassuming people, what we're never supposed to probably do anything in their life, it gives, it gives people like them a chance, yeah. including myself, you know. Um, I probably, in fact, I definitely didn't get to the position that I wanted to get to or that I, I had dreams and aspirations to get to mm. when I initially started, Russ. Yeah. But um, it definitely it definitely served me well. But yeah. like I said to you, I like to emphasise that mm. it was Brendan what saved my life because mm. I could have been boxing in, without Brendan. And if I'm yeah. honest, Russ, I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have got as far as You what really I did. respected him, didn't you, Brendan Ingle, didn't I, you? Yeah. Like Johnny Nelson, you and Johnny were his favourites, yeah. weren't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Whenever I see Johnny yeah. Nelson uh, mentioned, Brendan, yeah. he, he always talks about him like you do. Yeah. And I've only ever seen them together once. Uh, uh, the Journeyman film. Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, Sheffield, I went Bandle, to Bunch yeah. took me. Yeah, yeah. They were sat at back, Brendan and him. Right. And they, they had a good bond, didn't they? Yes, yeah, definitely. Trained, did Johnny, Brendan and We trained by him from day one all the way through. Yeah, all well, the That's way a great through. story then, isn't it, really? Yeah, yeah he, he, and, he said, Brendan would say, you know, Johnny came into the gym looking like a scared Mississippi, you know, what, being yeah. chased by the Ku Klux Klan. <laughs> His eyes was like this. Yeah. And he said, Johnny, he, he stood there because I walked over to him and went, hello there. He goes, and he couldn't even talk to me because he was in mm. shock. He goes, yeah. everybody turned around and looked at him as they do everybody, every yeah. stranger what walks in gym. Yeah. He goes, and to think Johnny got to where he got to, mm. you'd never believe it. But one thing Johnny did, he did as I said. Johnny was there from day one all the way through. He stayed loyal. Brendan mm. absolutely adored Johnny. He absolutely mm. adored him. Yeah. And, um, you know, John, I, I, I've, I've got love for Johnny myself. Johnny helped me out a lot, mm. you know, coming up through, um, yeah. especially the professional ranks. Yeah. Because he, I was feeling things that I'd never felt before. I was going through, th through things that I'd never felt before. So, what, you mean like your body change, you know? No, no just, no, like, no. just like, I, was with the, I went out to Germany. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. I was born with uh, a fella called uh, Michael Wallach, Wallach or something like that. And I was born with a fella called uh, Daniel, uh, Francesca Pionetta. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice kid, nice guy for Francesca. He fought Tyson Fury, didn't yeah, he? Fought Tyson, yeah, Tyson yeah. played with him. But, yeah, he played with um, him, yeah. yeah. 
Uh, what, I just remember a strange thing about Francesca Pinetta. He was like, yeah, his diet was cheese and chicken. Jeez. And tomatoes. And he's yeah. like, that's all he ate. Yeah. Like, it's good. Anyway, um, he, what do you call it? Uh, they invited me out to spot. I went out there and that um, Michael Wallach, Wallach or something like that. I was supposed to fight him and he, he, he didn't turn up for fight. But I think he would, I think he'd had like 17 and all, something like that, and 15 knockouts or something like that. Mm. that I, I would ready to fight anybody, you know. I, I never, never knew about being choosy even in, yeah. in professional boxing. I just thought that's what you do, you fight. Yeah. You know, when they when they mentioned, you know, Lucas Brown or they mentioned yeah, yeah. we we offered that to Joshua fight, you know, I think they offered me twelve grand or something like that. And Adam what explained to fight Joshua. Yeah, Adam explained to me that um, that were basically them saying they're going a different route because we we done a lot of sparring together yeah. and styles make fights and uh, um but well, like I say, it's, my point being yeah. is that I've, I've been I've been on a been on a roller coaster. I've enjoyed every second of it. I won't change anything. Um, yeah. One of the things that I probably change the amount of money that I got out of boxing because I didn't mm. get nothing out of yeah. it. I put a yeah. lot in. You got the spaces. experience. Though, I got yeah. the experience, and, and and like I say, look at this place. This probably yeah. wouldn't have come to fruition if I'd have not been involved in boxing. But like I said, Rose, yeah, yeah. With Brent, when Brendan went. If I'm honest, you know, I, I lost. I you lost, lost a bit of passion for it, didn't you? I lost all passion for it. I didn't see any yeah. point uh, being involved in boxing when when Brendan died. I just thought. You were I an left, engaging character, weren't you, Brendan Ingle? Wasn't it? Me and Brendan were together every single day. Yeah, yeah. Every day, apart from when he went to Marbella with, with his lovely wife Alma. He used to have him picking litter, litter up, didn't he, outside? Because I remember going up with him in my twenties, yeah. and there were lads in gym gear. Picking rubbish up and shoveling <laughs> it. one of them. <laughs> we one of them. Yeah, you saw me doing old people's gardens and stuff like that. And I remember, you know, going to Brendan's when I was like 15, 16. Mm. And, uh, and I think they were, he, he told me to come and mow some, mow some grass on the side of his house on the tree. Oh, yeah. And I was like, I remember at 15, 16 years old thinking, what, what am I doing? Why am I doing this? The guy's not paying me. What am I doing this for? And like I said, I, I sparred with. Um, Prince Nas, yeah. dropped me with a body shot. What, Nas dropped you with a yeah, body shot? Yeah, he did, yeah. Uh, oh, wait, were he then? Were you, were you just that way? He, he was no, fucking super clever, he was a world that. champion. Were you like, uh, just starting out? I was just a that? tall, streaky kid, you know what What's I mean? What's he doing sparring people? You're right on that. Even thing. Ryan Rhodes he used to pass people around like, <laughs> like he used to. I heard, I heard he used to <laughs> spar anybody anyway, so I don't know if it were true. No, it's true, yeah. yeah. Uh, Nas, Nas, Brendan. Ryan can punch as well, Ryan, can't Yeah, Ryan, Brendan used to say, you go, uh, Ryan Rose was better than Prince Nazi. Yeah, he was, was the technically. Only, the only difference between Prince Naz and Ryan Rhodes is Ryan Rhodes were in a in unstable, a unsta no, he went an unstable family environment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas Prince Naz, he went in a stable family environment. Yeah. He said, obviously, when that, when Ryan were coming through, he used to get things quick. He could adapt to things. He would just he were better because he was better than Naz. He harder than Naz. Yeah. He goes, but as time had it. They slowly started to do that, and obviously Nas stuck to what mm. he was doing. And well, I don't know, but he, he, that was Brendan's explanation. But uh, mm. he did. I thought he was good, Ryan. He was my, he's, him and Frotch are my favourite fighters. Really? I, I was seeing him, Ryan Rhodes doing stuff as a 19-year-old, 20-year-old. They were raving about him. He was, yeah. he was an old magazine. He was a massive yeah. note. Yeah, he was. Brendan, Youngest Brendan British champion yeah. and lot. And my only argument with the Ryan Rhodes story is. They put him in with that Uriah Grant, mm -hmm. and he was a massive middleweight, wasn't he? Yeah. And Ryan were really a light middle, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. They put him in with a massive middleweight. I'm saying, yeah, but well, you, you, you've got more yeah. knowledge than <laughs> I know. Than it. <laughs> well, he forced in Sheffield, didn't he, for world title, right, and got beat, didn't he? But it's just that the kid who beat him, yeah. I think he weren't ready for that fight after yeah. 16 fights. Yeah. And I think that Ryan Rhodes were a world class elite light middleweight fighting. As a middleweight, as a world class middleweight, yeah. but he didn't win a world title, but he was still a world class middleweight in my opinion. He beat Silky Jones, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought he was fantastic, off the charts his skills, yeah. but I think timing, you know, we speak about timing, yeah. you and Dennis a lot. Timing, Ryan Rhodes fought the guy at the wrong time, a bit like Yarde mm -hmm. fought Kovalev, he yeah. wasn't ready. Yeah, that's and it. And I think yeah. that a bit more timing and a little bit more care, Ryan Rhodes would have been a pound for pound star. Yeah, yeah. I really do believe that, honestly. Yeah, yeah. And people say, oh, you're crazy, you didn't win a world title. 
I don't think that means I don't know what my brain did, but it's still sort like, of so charts, so wasn't it? Yeah. Brittany used to tell me, he said, he goes, do you know Sugar Ray fucking Leonard? Yeah. And I go, yeah. He goes, do you know fucking Thomas Hearns? Yeah. He goes, yeah. He goes, do you know Roberto Duran and Marvin Hagler? I go, yeah. yeah. He go, they all avoided fucking Errol Burrell. Yeah, they did, yeah. So I goes, I goes, Brent, I don't remember sat down with It's a true story that Nigel yeah. Bennett and Eubank did, didn't they? They yes. just waved him, didn't well, they? Well, I, I went, when I went to, when I went to spoil with Vladimir, obviously, yeah, and yeah. Matala, I spoke to Emmanuel, and I said yeah. to Emmanuel, I goes, Emmanuel, do you know, Brendan used to tell me that um, um, Hearns used to avoid uh, a fellow called Errol Bobbergrave. <coughs> And he went, oh man, he went, that man making anybody look bad. Anybody yeah. look bad. He goes, and didn't, yeah. didn't answer, but more or less went, yeah. oh, like, oh, right, okay. So, yeah. you know, this, uh, they, they weren't just small, keep working. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Bre yeah. Brendan used to say, you couldn't hit Errol Bomber Green with a handful of roids. Yeah, you couldn't. You <laughs> couldn't yeah. But yeah, he got it, Julian it? Jackson. Yeah. yeah, I watched that fight last night. Actually. Julian Jackson, four yeah. round one. Can you see Naz in background? Yeah, it's a lot of kids. Crying his eyes out at the end. Oh, I didn't yeah, see yeah, that. If you watch that, but you'll see his views and that is really upsetting. That. Right. Yeah. It was a Barry Hearn show in Spain, one in Marbella. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, the Spanish, the Julian Jackson. Yeah, you've got some knowledge, man. It's all in here, it just needs to come out. It's brilliant, man. It's brilliant. But yeah, I'll tell you a story about that, actually, because I'm a bit of an historian. For those of you that don't know, uh, Barry Hearn wanted Errol Bomber Graham to fight for world title against Julian Jackson in England, but Julian Jackson had an eye problem and the board won't pass it. But they got it passed in Spain. <laughs> and I know, yeah. How do you know this? Cause, like, it's, a story. it's a true story. It's a true story, yeah. They got it passed in Spain. Um, he was blinding one eye, Julian Jackson, so they thought, oh, it's an easy but win. Partially blind. Partially blind, so, so yeah. 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 <laughs> Anyway, he won every round and the referee were going to pull him out, weren't he? We were going to pull. And he caught him with a punch from the gods. And when they took his gum shield out, Bomber Graham's gum shield, you know what? Yeah. All four of his teeth Inside gum shield. were embedded in the gum shield. So when people talk about hard punches, Julian Jackson, oh, my God. Yeah, different, very uh, different, different, different gravy. His son John Jackson's an. He's a as massive well. puncher as well. Oh. Didn't Andy Lee do him oh. as well? We went over to Madison Square Garden. Yeah. And uh, I was doing Andy Lee's corner yeah. with Adam. So basically, it went over and um, and you know I remember that that live training thing. I remember that I was filming a shot. What what Ad, Ad, um, Adam was. Uh, kept repeating with Andy, kept repeating with Andy, kept repeating with him, and he yeah. just go right up. And I remember Adam saying to me, Rich, put some gloves on. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, what should I put me? Because I wore 20 ounces of sparring. Yeah. So he went, yeah, put 20 ounces on. He went, because I want you to fly Andy. So I'm like, all right. And I'm thinking, oh, he just wants me to like, you know, simulate. So we got him ring, and he was like, Richard, rip into Andy. And Andy was, you know, going back to ropes, he would drop, roll, drop, roll, drop, roll, drop, roll. He goes, that's what he did him with, didn't it? That's what he did the guy with, didn't yeah. it? See what I mean about Adam yeah. Booth, the Dark Lord? Yeah, he's a, he's a genius, Adam. But, genius. Uh, he gets a lot of stick, Adam Booth, doesn't he? Well, it's a bit is, quirky, isn't it? Well, the thing is, well, all people in boxing are, we yeah. are, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> We're quirky. Yeah, well, but, uh, the thing is, with Adam, Adam's very particular in. Um, who he deals with. Adam's give me, given me so many good memories, given me so many good valuable lessons. Mm -hmm. one, of, one of the things that uh, stands out to me is, uh, Adam had said to me, to Richard, he said, never sell yourself short. He said, because you're a good guy, he goes, but I can see what you've done. Yeah. He goes, how you walk, he goes, your posture's like that. He goes, because you're coming down to what you think people expect from you. He goes, because you probably intimidate a lot of people naturally. Mm -hmm. You probably make a lot of people feel uncomfortable. But what I want to say to you is, it's not like that yet. So when you walk, walk tall. Yeah. When you speak, speak freely. When yeah. you're, you went, because you've got a good sense of common sense. He goes, so don't worry about saying the wrong thing. And Adam, Adam, believe it or not, you know, he's he worked on me. He worked on me mentally. You lived with him, didn't you? I lived with Adam for nearly three years. Home you know? bedroom and a lot. Of his yeah. got a right gaff, hasn't he? Yeah, it's amazing, it's amazing. But but what I'm saying to you is, is with Adam, Adam uh, is particular on how he does things. He won't sell himself short. And I don't blame him because in boxing... He took the system on him and they did it, basically. They booked the trend, didn't they? Yeah, yeah that's it. And he, he explains the story to me. He says uh, David A got offered uh, a, some, a significant amount of money to, for this uh, fight, the European title fight, where yeah. he knocked him out with a right hand. He said he got offered uh, a significant amount of money. 
um, to, to, to do some sponsorship. He goes, Richard, he goes, I was struggling. He goes, I was on my arse. He goes, make no mistake about it. He goes, I've not always been in this position. He yeah. goes, I was on my arse. He goes, David came to me and went, we can get this, we can do this. He goes, and Adam went, what is it? He goes, when he told me what it was, the sponsorship thing, it's not for me to say. Yeah. He goes, Adam went, he goes, I went, no, don't do it. He went, if you do that, I can't be part of it. He goes, so David basically fucking refused this, um, refused the uh, sponsorship, the sponsorship yeah. and obviously went on to knock this fella out with one punch. Bang! I remember that fight, we were on BBC, wasn't it? Yeah, I was in Marvin Grange when I was watching it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's a good jail out of the Do you know how hard I worked to get there, Ross? Yeah, I can, I can imagine, yeah. yeah. I've but, been uh, in the circle since then. Yeah, so yeah. Then, you know, yeah. But yeah, they, they did it the wrong way, didn't they? Adam move and they yeah, they... yeah, and and, and you can't fall him, can you? You can't fall Adam. He does things. That was speed. And I, and I think you know, Russ. I promise you, I'm just learning that you know I, we already we all know about jealousy. We know about jealousy for, yeah, yeah. for a long time, but jealousy comes in many forms. Yeah. And if you look at Adam, is he speaks immaculately? He, immaculate. He looks immaculate. He dresses immaculate, he presents himself immaculate, and the, it's funny, the only people that I hear talking about Adam, or see people talking about Adam, are people what look like they don't do those things immaculate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know, yeah. so is it, is it jealousy, is it whatever it is, but regardless of that, Adam's got a beautiful family, he's got a beautiful life, he's cracking on with stuff, and I can tell you, not many people have helped me like Adam Roof's helped me. I love him, I love him dearly, and I love his family dearly, and I don't say that lightly. Yeah, yeah, he's, uh, he's, he's one of the big hitters in trainers, in boxing, isn't he, at the moment, isn't he? Yeah. He's the MTK, he's the big advisor for yeah. now, MTK, yeah. isn't he? Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. yeah. He's, uh, you don't get jobs like that if you don't know what you're on with, do you? Nah, exactly that, exactly. He knows, he knows his way around, doesn't he? He, he took David A, didn't he, from turning pro, which I'm a big fan of this, you know, when they stay in from debut, yeah. to heavyweight title of the world and they won the one all belts at cruiserweight didn't they read magazine and yeah, bottling yeah, the old belts. Yeah. So yeah. he knows his onions, doesn't he? Adam? Oh but definitely. That, that's but he does get a bit of stick, I don't know why. Just the, the, uh, I think it's I think it's I don't like I said I don't think I remember Brendan uh, I, I had a bit of an issue with this fellow. Me and Brendan have gone into the steam room and um, and this fellow was just so disrespectful. So I've stood there and I've listened to this fellow for like five, five minutes, ten minutes, and he's talking. And after it's probably two minutes, the words went numb to me because I'm just thinking, I'm going to pull this guy over thing and push his fucking... And I just, I, felt, gonna do him I in. felt horrible to, towards this guy because he was being so disrespectful to Brendan. Yeah. Just Brendan, he turned up to the steam room, and Brendan turned up, he went, can I, can I get a towel please? And the fellow went, put your name on that piece of paper and slip paper. So he went, my name's Brendan. He went, I know who you are. He went, put your name on a piece of paper, so I'm stuck down thinking. And Brendan's got hold of me, my arm, my sleeve underneath, uh, outside the table, and he's squeezing my arm as if to say, you fucking keep calm, big fella. And I'm, yeah, so I'm stuck yeah. there, I'm looking at this guy, and he's going, put your name there, or you're not coming in. So he's gone, all right, no problem. He's got this pen, put his name down, he went, Brendan Ingle, MBE. You know, just to try and put a lightning on, th lightning on things. And this fella just went into one, so I pulled him over the thing. And um, I didn't do anything to him, I just yeah. pulled him over and scared him. But afterwards, we've gone in steam room anyway, and apparently the fellow performed police or whatever, I don't know, but we've gone in steam room, and, um, and I said to Brennan, I'm like, Brennan, I'm like, why? Why do people insist on causing trouble? And then, because as soon as I pulled the fellow over, I can't remember his name, because I'd name and cheer him if I could, but I pulled him over the table, and he's screaming, yeah! He weren't attempting to fight back, he weren't attempting to do nothing. He, he's literally just on the floor like, and I'm like, looking at him like, do you understand who you're speaking to? Have some respect to manage your little worm. Mm -hmm. And I said to Brendan after I went, Brendan, I went, why do people insist on causing trouble? And then that's how they deal with yeah. the, the repercussion of what they've, what they've caused. Yeah. Why, do, why do people, and he went, I read an article. This is in Steam Room. So I went, right, Brent. And he went, one in four people suffer from some form of mental problem. Do you know what that fucking means? So I'm like, one in four, Brent, of all the human like race. And he went, approximately seven and a half billion people. One in four of those have got some form of mental problem. 
So, and, I, and, it, and it made sense to me straight away, but yeah. he reiterated and he went, it's not you that they've got the fucking problem with, it's themselves. Yeah. Because and when you realise that, and I swear to you, Russ, now when I look at people and I get, I don't get, I get more people, it's crazy, Russ. Yeah. You look at me and you go, why the fuck do you want to fuck with this guy? Yeah. But they do. Right, they? And it's because they're not right, brother. Yeah. They're not right in head. But, uh, but yeah, uh, leave for a wee part. <laughs> 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 but uh, yeah, I've never been right yet. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody I speak to in boxing is not right. <laughs> but uh, it's the craziest sport in the world. But uh, we could go on all day about stories but about we've boxing. We've got good morals and values, haven't we, Russ? Well, we've, we've had to learn the hard way, haven't we? The door's always open to you. Yeah, as that. we've learned the hard way. We've, had, we've had to do the porridge, haven't we, to yeah. get, for it to get through to us. Yeah. But you've got this lovely gym here, Richard, and Thank it is God. lovely. Yeah. All, fat, look at this roof here, all oak and lot. Yeah. You've, you've, you've put everything into this and nobody's helped you at all, have they? Nah, no sponsors come on board. Nah, no, nobody's just, you, you've together, spent your own yeah. money. And, I think you've done really, really well to end up with your own well, gym. Well, these bikes, that bike there, that yeah. bike there. Oh, they're three or four hundred quid a pop, aren't they? Them, aren't they? Yeah, but, aren't but they? I didn't get those. Brendan, uh, I, got, I got the fellow from Ampro, he gave me them years ago when I was boxing professional. Oh, Brendan. yeah, and you saved them? Nah, I took them, obviously, they went gym. So yeah. Carl, who, who manages Brendan's gym now, yeah. he, he phoned me and he went, Richard, he went, I've got some bags for you if you want them. And he brought that like flipping it about what I got. He goes, yeah, I remember. He goes, yeah. put your name on. He's put my name on him. Yeah. And, um, oh, and then Dave Cole, the good Colwell got me that one there. And then Adam Booth's give me loads of equipment. Um, I've I've got everything that I need here. And then I've got these steppers. What uh, I've heard people say. Adam said to me, when they're brilliant for fighters like you know the stepper the stepper machine. Yeah. Then I've got one of those air bikes. I think they're about two grand, two and a half grand, something like that. Um, I've just, I, it's just come together. They're good then, they're good, aren't they? Yeah, they've got some good, it's all coming together, isn't it? Yeah, it's all it's all class equipment as well, isn't it? It's good stuff. Some proper good stuff for yeah, you. And then Dennis, Dennis give it his ring as well. Yeah. Dennis give it yeah. his ring. So I'm, yeah, I'm waiting for Canvas to follow up. Does Canvas is he's a little bit pumping his, dragging his feet a little bit, I don't know why. But, <laughs> yeah. Well, that's all you want, is basically a Canvas on you, and you don't know, Yeah, that's it, pal. So now, let's have a look at the, the times here, because this is in Rotherham, this gym. It's, uh, basically next to Paul Dave Colwell's yeah, gym, isn't it? Right, in between A1 Taxes and Dave Colwell's gym. It's yeah. uh, Richard hasn't got a name for his gym yet. Uh, so if anybody's got any ideas, uh, uh, at Richard underscore Towers, isn't it, on, yeah. on Twitter. Yeah. Or just send it to me, at uh, Corner Porky, on, on Twitter. Uh, the fitness and boxer size classes that are mixed the Monday to Wednesday, 6.30 till 8. 8.30. The fight related strength and, strength and conditioning, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 6 pm or 7.30. Uh, all fight relative. Uh, yeah, all fight relative stuff, stuff, yeah. stuff yeah. yeah. The women's classes, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, 6.30 while 8 pm. And the amateur classes, Monday to Friday, 9.30 while 11.30 and 4.30 while 6.30. And what Richard started doing is, on a Saturdays, he's going to be doing a explosive session, 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off. That's 1pm to 2.30. Um, I think we've got some on the back. Uh, on a Sunday, it's 10am. Till 12 p.m. That's a, a coaching class, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. That that'll be like probably a group of 10 people who, if you want to be a boxing trainer, he's going to take he'll take you through it all. Pad work, pad work, all that footwork yeah, and lot. They yeah. do the call the lines, don't they? Yeah, 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 they? yeah. It's postcode S60 one HW, and that's Masbury and Rotherham. So, if anybody's interested in getting fit, male or female, or your kids are eating wrong foods and that all, there's a problem with obesity with, with kids. I, I know that my little lad's putting a bit of weight on, so I'm trying to get him doing things. Because they eat wrong food at wrong times, kids, aren't they? It's yeah. our fault for... But the babies, the baby. Baby, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But we'll, we'll see, we'll see how, how I put my little Reggie, but yeah. getting back to anybody who, who's interested in fetching the kids here, or mums and dads, girlfriends, boyfriends, brothers, aunties, whatever. This is a good gym, this is a good setup. And like I say, he's just starting out, He's had no funding, he's had nothing, he's not been given anything. So, 
if anybody's got any kids as well that are naughty, we've just had a couple here that have come that are really naughty kids. Now, these two kids are potential jail. They're going to jail, aren't they? Yeah. They're going to jail, these two kids that have come here, but they started coming in and they're turning their lights around, so that's good. But if I seen them out there, I'd be thinking, they're going to jail. But they're not, they're coming in and they're doing boxing. And boxing, like I said at the beginning of the video, it does save life, it saved my life. I'm not a boxer, but I do little bits and bats inside the boxing industry. And it's given me a focus to do things. I'm a bit critical, but I like to tell it straight. But I also am praise how I try to. <laughs> <laughs> but we're not harming anybody, are we? It's just opinions, isn't it? Boxing saves life, so get your send down there, or if there's any sponsors on board, I can see them putting some stuff up in here. Yeah, if there's anybody who wants to, I'll reach it out. Get on board. I'll say, say to anybody who's starting a gym, oh, give me a shout, I'll come and see you. Because they need more of these in community. There isn't one where I live, but I'd like to see more. There's, well, there's two on the street now, isn't there? You and Dave, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. Well, Dave, Dave on the tree is professional. He's just such yeah. professional, yeah. doesn't he? So is his gym empty all the time then, Dave, probably? Apart from oh, when he's got oh, like Donald it. Brothers and stuff yeah, that's like that. It. That's it, yeah. Well, he he's got a good life now then, hasn't he? Oh, yeah. Well, he's, He's put his graft in, hasn't he? He's put the time in. So, yeah. so you can't take it away from him. He's put the time in, Dave, and he'll yeah. reap in the benefits. A bit like with Brendan, he put his time in, hasn't he? Yeah. And they handed it over to Dominic and that, didn't yeah. he? Yeah, they're, 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 they're putting the Dominic. One thing you've got, you got to understand about Dominic, he puts the time in. But oh. Dominic will tell you straight. He lives it, doesn't he, Dominic? But doesn't Dominic he? will tell you straight, I'm not in it for the same reasons what my dad were. Dominic's mm. not a humanitarian, he doesn't claim to be. Brendan. Mm. He used to he used to put put the time in just to turn people's lives around, just to better people. Yeah. Just to well, he bettered you, didn't he, Richard? Because you were going that wrong path, weren't you? One hundred percent. I'd have I'd have been I'd have been um, I'd have definitely been back in jail. I mean, you got thirteen years, didn't you? But before that, you were only man for about over a year. You were for four or ten murders, weren't you? You got not guilty on that, didn't you? Yeah. Well, I got I got I first got locked up when I was seventeen for two or ten murders. Then I got yeah. out. I got uh, I got out uh, a few months later. I got locked up for one or ten murders. Yeah, go on. You got locked up for what, one attempt murder. Yeah. I got locked up for one attempt murder when I was 17. No, two attempt murders when I was 17. Then I got out. I got not guilty on them. I got acquitted on them. Um, and then uh, a few months later, I got locked up for uh, one attempt murder. Uh, that that got thrown out because the kid disappeared or whatever, went to mm. another country or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just not to do with me, just to yeah, yeah. circumstance. Um, and then I got locked up for another two attempt murders. Mm. Uh, they got they got dropped. Uh, then I got so you're not a hitman for hire no more then. <laughs> nah. <laughs> I won't ever. I won't ever. <laughs> Just wrong place at wrong time, Richard. Yeah, isn't it? The thing is, it's it's always been the same, you know. A respect what? thing, innit? You know, when you were younger, if if you thought anybody dissed you, you, you used. They were pretty brave to dish you anyway, but I never, I never understood. Yeah, never you, understood. right. From, there were no guidelines set for you, were there? That's it, and I never understood. No boundaries set yeah, for you. Yeah, exactly. That. I never really understood, bro. So you do now, though, don't you? When oh, you, definitely. Obviously, when you do it 13 years, you do it, don't yeah. you think? Yeah. Because yeah. you, 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 you know you've done wrong after the month, yeah, but you've still got years to go. Still got another 10 to go at least, yeah. But, but uh, I do remember, like, mm. thinking to myself, how oh, can people be so, so rude? Yeah. I've always raised my manners, my mum raised yeah. me really well, you know, I've always had good manners yeah. and I've always been res re really respectful. Mm. I, I've all, I probably have took advantage yeah, of yeah, yeah. same as any man has, but uh, I never took kindness or weakness, not what I can remember. And I remember, you know, the more uh, placid and the more uh, courteous and the more polite I was, I remember, I remember people, you know, literally going, shaking my hand and going, why are you so fucking friendly? And I'd be like, what do you mean? And they go, are you a pussy? Are you a faggot? And I'm like, say that again. And then, and then five minutes later, they're on the floor screaming. And, yeah, and, and all of a sudden, I'm, I'm in fucking uh, Doncaster on remand. Yeah, you yeah. Know? And, and that's, that's, I think that's a problem in society now. So, mm. like with kids, kids come into the gym, you see how I am with them, Russ. Yeah, oh, I've, just seen, yeah. I've just seen you now, what are you with them, them to like? Because yeah. if you didn't set them guidelines out against them kids or boundaries, yeah. They would have just been coming in here doing what they want, so you've got to be firm with them at the beginning, haven't you? This fucking gym. This and that's what these, yeah. these gyms need. I mean, I would have loved something like this when in my area when I was a kid, but yeah. they, they want there. Yeah, that's you know it. You know what I mean? They want there. Yeah. But 
I think you're doing really well. And nobody can nobody can say, you know, I've heard people say, fucking hell, how much did this cost, how much did that cost? I've put this I've put this place well, together. Got into it, by yeah. using the initiative yeah. and speaking yeah. to friends. I've made friends rather than enemies as yeah. I've gone along. Yeah. And when I've asked people, Adam, Adam, a friend of mine called Paul, uh, Paul Forrest. Is that on, but Adam will help you out. He's just giving me all that equipment down there. Charlie and Adam, they've given me all that down there, all all um, Olympic bars, brand oh, new yeah. bag, um, just stuff what, and it just needs cleaning up, they give me all the medicine bowls, stuff that needs, all this equipment needed cleaning up, well, I've just gone around, cleaned it all up, you see how you comment on me being meticulous, I cleaned you are clean, up. yeah, well I noticed, yeah, yeah. And, and, but and I noticed with that session you've just done with Cash Alley, because yeah. Richard's training Cash Alley now, uh, uh, He's probably, you could say, he's English level going into British level, isn't he? But he's, he, he all needs to be put into blender and done properly. Definitely, he? definitely. He, he's just done a strength and condition legs with you, hasn't yeah, he? And yeah, yeah. You made him do it and perfect, you know, every set, yeah. every set you did. Yeah. And he's not had that, he was saying to me he'd not had it. Never had that. it. No, we, 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 yeah. Coming here, we did something where we're just uh, body weight, body, body weight exercises yeah. and I said to him do this cash because I can see Adam taught me about this Adam yeah. taught me about you know over pronation under pronation yeah. Adam did a full year a full four year degree on the way people walk so yeah. when it comes to it Adam Adam knows his stuff come in come in come in One minute, when it comes to it, when it comes to it, Adam knows his stuff, you know, yeah, so oh, to learn, to learn yeah, from yeah. Adam, I've just I picked everything up and like I just want to say to people, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not doing what I think's right, I'm not doing what I think I should be doing in a boxing gym, I'm doing what I've been taught by Brendan, then Emmanuel, then, Emma, then Adam Stewart, uh, then Adam, Adam Booth, sorry. So all not these coaches, then are they? <laughs> and it's not even it's not even like a meant to meant it to happen like that. It's just uh, it's all come together. Well, if you can I'm get sort of uh, if you can do something, I, I'll send guys there. I, they've all trained. I mean, I'm Manuel Stewart. I think is he trained more than any other trainer. I mean, not not on about from day one. Guys that have gone to him, he's had them all, hasn't he? Yeah. Tommy Earns, Lennox Lewis, Michael Mora. Yeah. He, he, I think he's got the record for most world Jeremy champions Clark. trained. Yeah. General McClellan, they yeah. left him with McClellan, didn't they? Oh, no. Look what happened. Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, and then what, what, Brendan Ingle. Uh, pff, no, you don't even need to mention that. Do he yeah, should have been exactly, knighted. Exactly. And Adam, Adam Booth, who's well, they say he's top five in the world at the moment, aren't yeah, they? So if you can't it's... learn off that. There's some, there was someone. You took some from each individual. Well, that's it. And you've got Dennis it. throwing his bits in because he likes to think he's a trainer. He didn't. Well, he? He's not bad, is he? He knows his stuff. Dennis, yeah. you, know, you, you can't take it away from him. You know, a lot. Yeah. People look at you know Ricky Atten. They look at Clinton Woods. Look at Jim and McDonald. And yeah, he's got into the bench, hasn't he? And told them things, hasn't he? A long way, hasn't he? Well, Dennis has created champions that people what were never supposed to be champions. It's like Cash Allen, people don't think he's going to do it, do no, they? That's it, but you Dennis want... gets the unwanted, doesn't he? Well, well, the thing is, somebody, somebody's got to do a job. Yeah, somebody's where, got where, yeah. Where nobody else wants to. But the thing is, with, with me, Russ, I see, I see the unobvious in people. Yeah, yeah. Most people only see the obvious. Have ones. you seen something in Cash that's good? I'll tell you what, I've known Cash from 14 years old. I actually knew his father was passed yeah. away recently. Yeah. And I know how close they were. Mm. His father was a dear friend of mine. Yeah. And his father, when we'd left Brendan's, his father always tried to steer him my way. But mm. Cash understands that I'm the type of person I don't take no shit. Yeah. I, don't, I don't cut corners. Yeah. Even when I was training, I didn't cut corners. It's not yeah. about me, but I'm just yeah. trying to explain to you yeah, yeah, what yeah. my standards require. Yeah. And now Cash has gone round and he's learned a, hard, a few hard lessons and he's come all the way back round. As human beings, this is how we do things. He's now come back to a point where he realises he probably should have been doing this however many years ago. Yeah, the fact yeah, yeah. he yeah. didn't. He's here now. Yeah. I promise you. Russ. And he's only got one defeat, yeah. Exactly. And he and uh, well, well he one, win one, one disqualification. Yeah, it's a DQ, yeah. And and, and he weren't he, he, Cash has never even been fit. Yeah. And when I'm explaining to you the yeah. sorry, I'll just spit on it. Yeah, got no, no, no. When I'm when I'm explaining to you about how Cash has come in, he's just doing weight body exercises, yeah. like lifting his legs, like just moving, moving around. 
And he started sweating straight away, and I'm like, Cash, why do you find that hard? And he goes, I don't know. And I know why he's, why he's finding it hard, why? because he's never trained. Yeah, he's never done it, has he's he? He's never trained. The best yeah. time I've seen him train is when we were at Brendan's, and we're all training together, we're all doing his little part. But after that, yeah. after that, Cash has met, he's always done what he's wanted to do. Right. And to have pulled that off with David Price and nearly pull it out, because he nearly had it. Yeah. Right? And I know fights aren't about, oh well he nearly did it, nearly did this. And people are concentrating on this bite. I understand that he shouldn't have done that. I understand that that was the way to go about things. And I also understand that that was Cash's way of trying to get out of fight. But what it does tell you, Russ, and it, oh, it certainly tells me, yeah. it tells me that's what result you get with fight or flight. And I'm telling you, we don't know it until it comes to the punch. Yeah, yeah. Most people, they'll, 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 they'll flight instead of fight. And yeah. the way people fly is they go, oh, they stand in the corner and go, sit in the corner and go, I've got shoulder injury. Or they go, I've hurt my knee. Or they go, Cash's way of getting out of it was, ah, I'm not yeah. saying it was wrong. I'm not yeah, saying it was right. Yeah, yeah. He had a lot of shit going on. His yeah, dad yeah, just yeah. died. And it all come out. He didn't handle it very good, did he? His it? dad had just died, and I understand. Yeah. I understand. Just knowing Cash, how much that affected the guy. Because yeah. Russ, I'm being honest with yeah, you. Yeah. I only want to work with a, a decent standard of a fighter. Yeah, just yeah, like yeah, Alex yeah. taught me this. Don't and is he, he, and is he a good standard of fighter for you to work with? Yeah. And I'm he's telling done, you, yeah. he's doing everything I'm asking of him, and I know it's killing him. Yeah. I've, bought, I've, I've bought a blender, I bought a blender, I bought loads of fruit because I teach my children yeah. how do we lead and they'll go by example. And I'll yeah. go, right, so I bought a blender and I said to the kids, I'll go, how much do I pay for all this fruit and ice water point fridge? And they'll go, a lot less than what you charge us for the protein shakes. I'll go, exactly, so what am I doing? They go, you're hustling. I'll go, how much? You saw me earlier, how much yeah. do I pay for these waters? 35p. They'll go, 35 pence. I'll go, how much do I charge for them? 70 pence, I've got making 100% profit on you and they go, you can see Yassi, the little, little one, what yeah, looks yeah, a bit yeah, of a yeah, yeah, you yeah. can see him looking and thinking, that ain't right, and I go, but you need it, don't you? And yeah. Go, yeah, I mean, you walk into Sainsbury's, you walk into Asda, you walk down Meadow Wall, walk into every shop, and they're hustling you, yeah. so what difference is it? The only difference is, I'm telling you what I'm doing, yeah, but not. why am I telling you? Do you think I'm telling you to take the piss? They're no, not. not, they're not, are they? No, they're not, I'm telling you, yeah, so yeah, you yeah. learn, yeah. learn what's going on around you. Yeah. And yeah. you know the other lessons come into play and this and that. But like I said, Russ, mm. I'm, I, I feel I feel privileged to be in the position I'm in. Yeah, no, I'm yeah. enjoying the position. You're, lay, you're laying foundations for your future, aren't you? Exactly. This is what you, you've all, all that stuff in America with Manuel Stewart and London. We had them move and all them years of Austria, 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 sorry. Sorry. Oh, sorry, yeah, man. Yeah, in yeah. in uh, Austria, with yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you're in Vladimir's camp. Seven, yeah, yeah. seven camps, you yeah, didn't you? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So well, six, oh, sorry, six, six, six yeah. camps with Vladimir. You, you years with Brendan Ingle. You live with Adam Wolf for three years, didn't you? Yeah. So three years, three years, right? Yeah. Three years, and then just you go, you go Ireland with Adam Wolf in Europe, and I know you saw. I still walked at Jim. Yeah. So all that, that yeah. you're gonna put into this now, aren't you? Oh, into your that's all I know. It's time for to fly now, isn't it? That's it. That's it, pal. Yeah, that's it. That's yeah. good. Definitely. Brilliant. Well, listen. Definitely. Thanks very much for having me here today. It's been great. Two seconds. I've nearly done that. Thanks for, uh, thanks for watching, I hope you're going to like and subscribe, it's nice for Richard to have me in this gym today, he's working with Dennis, who I work for, so it's all good positive stuff from me and I am Mr Negative at some, at some <laughs> well most of the time, because boxing gets you like this, doesn't it Richard, gets yeah, me frustrated, get, gets me frustrated, I have got a good intention, but it, boxing drives me mad at times, so I'm passionate about it, I've had to call with Spencer Fearing about this and I'm trying to be more positive, but it's very hard, but this is positive today, coming here. And this gym here is for this area, and it's also, Richard, he's took nothing out of boxing, but spilt blood, sweat and tears. He's got nothing out of the game, and he's starting this gym up here, and like I said, there's going to be headaches for him down the road, it's going to be like that. But he's doing good things in community, Such so get that. behind, yeah? yeah? Get behind this gym, all you people who are in the area, and you want to get fit. Come to Richard's gym if you're from Rotherham and you want to learn boxing or you want to be a coach. It's all here for you to do. So, all right. So, peace out. Keep on. Keep following boxing and keep following channel. All right. Thank you very much. We just timed it. Up.
shot than I. Get in. I'm gonna go for free, uh, free for 20 quid. I mean, come on.